I'm Jamie Stokowski, the Georgetown Butcher. Today, a cut of beef that can't be beat. My favorite meat? I would say, oh gosh, it is a hard question. Uh, I'd probably say New York strip. I really like flank steak. The porterhouse, the big daddy of roasts, prime rib. I would order a ribeye. Oh, I just love ribeyes because they have so much fat in them. Just a ribeye. Ribeye. I do like ribeye. I think those are the best pieces of meat, are the ribeyes. A lot, a lot of people love ribeye. A lot of people prefer ribeye over New York strip. Now, the New York is going to have a little bit more of a bite. The rib, just like a lamb chop or a pork chop, it's going to be a little bit softer, but very, very juicy. Tender, very juicy, very rich, sweet meat. And there's a lot of like fat marbling throughout it, so it's always very juicy when you cook it well. Oh, they just got so much flavor from that fat that layer that r runs around them. Talk about flavor and tender juiciness. Off the bone, known as ribeye. And from that, world famous cuts of steak are called Delmonico's. Delmonico? Uh, the Delmonico. I think the Delmonico is a bigger piece of beef. You, you threw me for a little bit of a loop there. Um, I don't know exactly what a Delmonico is. Stokowski's, we always start with prime USDA beef. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare this and make it chef ready. First we're going to open up the flap. There's a top flap on this. Get down inside the ribeye. Everybody loves a ribeye, but it comes with a certain price. There's always a great amount of sinew and that big chunk of eye fat right in the middle. And uh, you get to that middle section and it's just got, oh, it's just so flavorful. So. You're, you're making me hungry. Stop this. <laughs> I swear, my mouth is watering. I mean, I like the ribeye, but it, it sometimes is more fatty, and so, I don't know. Well, here at Stokowski's, we take care of that for you. Remember, Chef Ready, I'm going to show you how we do that. Take this little bit of silver skin this way. I took this little flap back this way. We're basically at the eye, cutting around that, afraid to eat it. In fact, that's where the flavor is. When you're out with guests sitting around the dinner table, you know everybody's afraid to eat it. So let's just get it out of there. That's what everybody has a hard time eating when you're eating ribeye, cutting around this. Everybody loves that, but this flap is where there's a lot of rich flavor. Turn this around, I'm gonna show you. There you go. Now, there, there's a beautiful clean ribeye. This is where the cracking of meat comes in. So we're gonna put this back, and with the uh, aid of modern technology, the meat glue or transglutamine, we're gonna glue that back together. This is not contraband, but this is the latest craze in food technology, all the rage among chefs and master butchers. This is a live enzyme. Japanese product, and this basically, where proteins come in contact with each other, they will, they will bind together. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a liberal amount on here, like salt. Food safe, put the flap back. What you have now is you've created the cleanest, most tender, rib, ribeye, and therefore Delmonico or ribeye steaks, you and your guests will be amazed at the lack of fat and sinew left on the plate. Very powerful. That's a very powerful statement right there. And you know me, I can't do anything without finishing by tying it up. To hold this in place so that overnight it glues together, is excellent. Old fashioned cut of beef with modern technology. So these are these are the ribeyes now cut into Delmonico's. As you can see, the
the cap is nice and melded to the eye of the rib. We cut them like this and present them like this in the market. What I want to do now is cook one and show you how tender and delicious this is. So I'll make a little slat with the knife. I'll push a little garlic in. I want to make sure it's thin enough so you're not biting into such a strong flavor. A little sliver right there. Remember what I said, steaks, hot and quick. You want medium rare. I'm not gonna move that steak for five minutes. I'm not even gonna check on it. I'm just gonna let it simmer, sear, seed, and sear in that hot oil. Like I said, the ribeye wants to curl, it tends to curl, so I'm gonna brick it a little bit. As you can see, it's gonna hold it down flat till it creates its ectoskeleton in order to keep its flat shape. All right, so you think it's cooked too much. Feel that. You can hear if it's cooking too much. You can hear. You don't even need to look I'm at it. I'm not looking at it. You, you, you can hear. I'm not going to move that steak for five minutes. You can hear your what, what, are, what are you hearing? You're hearing over time. I'm not even going to check it. I'm not even going to check it. I'm hearing time. So you can hear time. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going to let it simmer, sear, seed, and sear in that hot oil. You can hear time. You can hear time. And uh, what I, heard, you mean I heard too is, much of it. What you mean is, <laughs> is you heard it cooking for a long time. That's what, and, That's you, and you were smushing it with a brick. I don't know what you were doing. We were keeping the steak flat. The, the ribeye tends to curl up, okay. right? You see that, how it's all together? No sinew in there, no fat eye, no gristle. That's a wonderful steak. Maybe I heard wrong then. I guess I heard wrong. All the way through. Every bite, every morsel. Tender and juicy. Look at this. Through and through. A little bit of garlic there. That's meat crafting right there. That's delicious steak at its best. Crafted at its best. So, a little bit of the old, a little bit of the new to create a wonderful steak experience. Are we going to eat some of it? Mmm. Mmm. Perfect. Mmm. Delicious sweet meat. 